What is going on guys, it's Modded Warfare here. Welcome back to another PS5 jailbreak news update. So we've got a pretty significant one to dive into here in this video because earlier today, developer Flats revealed that he successfully managed to dump the PS5's platform security processor or PSP. And this is basically the system that creates a secure boot environment for the PS5. It's at the highest trust level in the system. So if you can exploit that, you basically gain control over everything else. You can bypass the hypervisor and get a full jailbreak. And that is essentially what Flats has managed to do here. He's managed to dump the platform security processor. So in addition to that, he also used an exploit which utilized a corrupt save file for a disc-based PS4 game, which works on the PS4 and PS5. So he has some kind of exploit that he can run using a modified save file for a PS4 game. And it works on PS4 and PS5, apparently up to like the latest firmwares. That's his own like private exploit that he has. And apparently Flats does not plan on disclosing this new uh, exploit that he has here for the platform security processor on how he managed to do it. He's not going to be making that information public. So those are kind of the main bullet points right there. But there's quite a lot more to get into here. So let's go ahead and kind of break this down a little bit. So all of this stuff was going on in a convo on the PS5 reverse engineering discord where Flats was chiming in from now and then uh, just to clarify a few things but you know he didn't say a hell of a lot so there's a lot of stuff that's still you know completely unknown at this stage and a lot of this stuff is still speculation so I want to make that clear but here's what we know so far. Okay so getting into the details apparently he was able to dump the platform security processor all through software alone. There was no hardware level hack in order to obtain it. It was all done through software and this means that he also has access to the decryption keys now where he can get the decryption keys now to decrypt the firmware and basically anything else on the PS5 for the most part uh, which is pretty big. He basically has the PS5 broken into completely at this point and of course he can also bypass the hypervisor on firmware 2.50. So 2.50 was the firmware that he was on when he actually did this and he's not actually tested to see if it works on higher firmwares either. So we don't know at this stage if it was patched after 2.50 and we also don't know if the keys have changed either because apparently according to Flats he says he's not sure if or when they've patched this but usually they change keys between hardware revisions so I guess boot ROM dumps from newer revisions have other keys. So that's where the kind of unknowns come into this. We don't know, you know, if the exploit has been patched in 3.0 because 2.50 was, I believe, the last firmware version where the actual hypervisor was embedded as part of the kernel, whereas in 3.0, it was actually separate. So that could be the issue there. It may have been patched in 3.0, but apparently Flats haven't, hasn't actually tried it in higher firmwares and he might at some point try it on higher firmwares, but we don't know. And also the decryption keys, we don't know if those keys have been changed on those higher firmwares either, but it seems that Flats is suggesting that it's more likely that the keys get changed due to hardware revisions rather than firmware updates. So it's more likely the keys will have been changed in a newer like motherboard revision or a new model of PS5 like the CFI 1.2 versus the 1.1 or maybe they changed the keys between the 1.0 models and the 1.1 models. So we don't know yet. That's still all up in the air. That's still a wait and see kind of situation. So we don't know at the moment if 2.50 is as far as it goes or if it's patched in 3.0 but maybe the decryption keys still are still the same for certain models on 3.0 and higher. We don't know at this stage. And apparently this appears to be the same exploit that was discovered by Fail Overflow in November of 2021. If you remember this tweet from back there where they said that they managed to dump the keys from the PS5. Well, that is essentially what Flats has managed to do as well using the same vulnerability. They've kind of confirmed it with each other that it is apparently the same exploit by the looks of things. So that is pretty interesting as well. Now, moving on to the actual implementation here, the fact that he used a corrupted save file for a disc-based PS4 game. And, you know, he's not planning on releasing the method, but he does say it could be ported to the current exploits that are available, like the Blu-ray drive, the BD jailbreak that we have from the flow, as well as potentially the WebKit version uh, the WebKit implementation by Spectre as well. So it could be implemented by the public exploits that we already have access to. So that shouldn't be too much of a problem. But the big thing obviously is the fact that he says he's not going to be actually releasing this. Specifically, he says he'll never publish any proprietary and confidential stuff, but he does want to implement and disclose if it will work 
methods for things like fake packages like he did for PS4. So even though he won't reveal the full method of how he managed to get access to the platform security processor or the PSP, he will potentially, if he can get it working, release things like the method of how to do things like fake packages, essentially the first uh, kind of steps towards a homebrew enabler type situation for PS5. And that's something that he will release. He did do that for PS4 as well. And in the form of basically a write-up, which just kind of goes over how he actually did it. And then other developers can take that information and implement it themselves, uh, which is probably what will happen if he is successful uh, with doing things like fake packages. And he also did say that he thinks fake packages can be implemented without the hypervisor, but he doesn't know for sure at this stage. He can't know until he actually tries to implement it. So, so even though he says he's not going to actually release the exploit, he did say that he will try to actually get fake packages going for the PS5 and make that information public, which other developers can then implement, which would still be pretty significant if we could actually do that. We could actually have a homebrew enabler and fake packages like we have on PS4. The implementation may be quite different to PS4, but we could potentially get that working, which would be huge. So obviously the best case scenario would be for him to just release it, the entire method, but that doesn't look like that's going to happen. The next best scenario is that the decryption keys have not changed between 2.50 and consoles that are on 2.50 to 4.51, that they are the same and that he's actually able to get fake packages working without requiring the hypervisor. And then that could potentially affect people who have PS4s on 3.0 to 4.51. That would be the best case scenario. Obviously, we don't know, though. We don't know if those keys have changed in any of those firmwares or if they're, you know, if they are hardware revision specific um, and what hardware revision they were changed in and if the exploit still works on those uh, newer versions uh, in order to be able to, you know, dump the, the updated keys. We don't know at this stage. So still a lot of unknowns with this, but this is still a pretty significant development right here. Yeah, this could be the first big step towards hen and you know fake packages going on the ps5 which is pretty huge now remember that this method from flats is completely separate to some of the other things that we have going on in the ps5 scene like the astral sky or astral skis his homebrew poc that's a completely separate thing that is trying to implement homebrew without requiring a hypervisor bypass so that is still in the works there's actually quite a few developments going on with that at the moment so for example, Zeko released a picture here showing a homebrew test app that seems to have crashed here uh, using Astralski's uh, POC, the homebrew POC. So, so there's homebrew tests being worked on there uh, with that POC. You also have um, Diz Mods, who has been working on a PS5 API to basically allow you to do things like what the PS4 trainer and mod tools on the PS4 can do where they can remotely connect to the PS5 through RPC and then modify the memory of a game, for example. So in this particular case, you can see him modifying um, Black Ops Cold War. He modifies the memory address here to enable some debug text here on the game. So you can see we've got that going on as well. Plus, we also have um, T-Rex777 or Jose Gonzalez, who has been working on a package installer by essentially trying to modify uh, the kind of IDU package installer that runs in IDU mode in the background that automatically installs the OMSK application. So he's basically been trying to, first of all, get that working outside of IDU mode, which I believe he has done, but also trying to get it to allow him to install other PS5 packages rather than just the OMSK application, because currently the package installer in the debug settings for the PS5 is only capable of installing and recognizing PlayStation 4 package files and not PS5 package files. It's basically just the PS4 package installer on the PS5. So we need an actual proper package installer for the PS5 that will allow us to install PS5 packages as well. And that's also being worked on by him as well. So as you can see, there's a lot of other developments going on here for the PS5. We've got the homebrew POC going on without requiring a hypervisor bypass. So even if, you know, worst case scenario, the, the things that Flats has discovered is only relevant to 2.50 and lower. At least we have the, you know, PO, homebrew POC that will hopefully allow us to do uh, homebrew and, you know, trainers and other things on uh, 3.0 to 4.51 anyway. So yeah, pretty exciting stuff. You can see things are really ramping up here uh, with the PS5 scene. So hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe and I'll hopefully see you guys in the next one.